Coming up on this edition of Inside the Tribe, you'll get an inside look at the girls golf team and hear about Student Council's Halloween Spooktacular. Plus, Miss Nelson has some news from the library. JC, myself, and some of your teachers show you the safe and right way to return to school. And you'll hear a spooky story from some of our key club kids. Inside the Tribe starts right now. Thanks for joining us on this week's edition of Inside the Tribe. I'm JC Dirtle. And I'm Reagan Perry. Mrs. Bramwell is back with another Tech Talk. Today's Tech Tip is all about keeping things organized in your drive. A lot of times I'll open up a document and start working on it. Um, and I am on the screen, I remember to title it before I leave it, but I don't actually go organize it in Google Drive. So it's often just sitting there as its own thing in Google Drive instead of in a folder where I actually want it organized. So without leaving the screen, I want to show you how you can actually take care of that. Up here next to the title name where you can rename it and all that kind of stuff, you have a couple of different icons. The star it makes it a priority within your Google Drive. Um, this little cloud shows you the document status. So if you're having a lag on internet access and whatnot, um, this just lets you know when you see that check mark that all changes have been saved um, so that you're looking at the most updated version and that it's going to be saved. So you can actually turn on offline use as well um, so that just in case you lose internet, it's still going to be saving. But this is the one that we want to look at, this move option. So because I've created this document myself, it's automatically placed in my drive so that it's easy to get to. But once again, I would have to remember the name and it's just file by itself. I'm going to click on this move option and it's going to automatically take me to my drive. And now I have all of the different folders that I have available um, in my drive that are easy to get to. So since this is spectacular, this is something for student council, I'm going to find my student council folder and I can move it here. I can also go ahead and create a new folder within a folder or you can create it within Drive. Um, and so that I have October events, just hit that check mark. And now we have a folder. I can click move here. And now this file is going to be found within that folder in Google Drive, make it a little bit easier for me to keep track of in the future. You can also do this whenever you're getting a document that is not yours. So for example, I found this tutorial about using Kami for editing PDFs. I found it online. This is not something I've made. Again, you'll see that it's got the title. I can't edit that because it's not mine. It's view only, right? I've got the star option. It's been saved because again, it's not mine. I'm not making any changes, but you'll notice in the middle here, instead of this folder option, we have this plus sign and add shortcut to drive. So when I click that, the option pops up to put it in my drive. Again, we've got all these different options to start with. Um, most of the time you're just going to put it in your drive. And once again, you have these options um, to click a specific folder or to create one and move that uh, item into that folder so that it's easier for you to find in the future. You can also do this from emails. So over here in Gmail, I have an email from Principal Laredo that has some different attachments that I probably want to keep. I can either download that so that I have it within my files, um, but that just saves it to my specific storage on this desktop or that specific Chromebook. Um, instead, I can click this add to drive. And as soon as I click organize, all of those same options for putting it where I want it um, in my drive are there as well. So lots of options for keeping things organized. Extended Day is an after-school tutoring service offered to students of all grade levels on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 1.20 to 2.20. This service is scheduled to begin on Tuesday, November 10th. Registration and information is on our school website. Go to ep309.org under Freshman Academy. Extended Day, students and their guardian will be notified by an email as when they will begin. First Start takes place on Monday, November 2nd from 8 to 11.30 and Link Crew is beyond excited for this day. First Start is in the morning in which freshmen and their Link Crew leaders will engage in small group activities followed by their freshmen walking through their schedule. All freshmen should bring their Chromebook. If taking the bus be at their stop at least 10 minutes prior to pickup time, have and properly wear a mask at all times. This includes waiting at the bus stop and on the bus and everyone will receive a lunch once the day ends. 
Speaking of people who are excited to have students back in the building soon, these fun and crazy staff members of ours are really excited to see students again. Save the dates for school pictures. School pictures will be taken on December 9th and 10th from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. More information will be available closer to the date. Attention seniors, you can get free food just by taking the next steps in your post high school planning. A couple of weeks ago, Student Services sent out the checklist challenge. When you complete any task on the checklist, enter your information onto the Google form, and on Friday, Student Services will draw a winner. The food will be delivered to your house. Congratulations to J.C. Dirtle and Sophie Schneblin. J.C. has been selected as the DAR Award winner and Sophie for the SAR Award winner for the EPCHS Class of 2021. Both students were nominated by their peers and then voted by their faculty. The DAR and SAR Awards are intended to encourage and reward the qualities of cooperation, dependability, leadership, patriotism, and service. Anyone interested in playing softball this season, please email Coach Menzioni at dmenzioni at ep309.org for information. Live chat with Ms. Nelson is available on the library webpage. If you have any questions about research, books, library stuff, or other textbook stuff, you can have your questions answered quickly with the live chat. The link is at the bottom of your screen, and Ms. Nelson would love to hear it from you. Speaking about Ms. Nelson, let's hear about this new feature from her. Hello, East Peoria. This is Miss Nelson, your friendly librarian. And I just wanted to let you know that if you are interested in having a live chat uh, with me at any time from 7.30 to 3.30 p.m., you can go to the library webpage and it's right up there on top. All you have to do is just start typing and I'll reply to you. So this would be good for any kind of quick question you have or if you're sick of email or if you want a book or anything at all. Um, so that's all you need to do is just go to the library webpage and we can chat. Thanks. Hope you're doing great. Say bye. Bye. If you're wanting to do behind the wheel, please check and respond to your school email. You will have received an email from Mr. Gonnigan. Ms. Menzioni or Ms. Romeo. Even if you're not ready to do behind the wheel, we will still need your response. Officer Sargenti will begin selling parking passes on Monday, November 9th, as soon as school lets out at 105 in the Dean's office. This will run throughout Friday, November 13th. You will need to bring cash or a check for $30. Please maintain social distancing and only two students will be allowed to enter the office at a time. Looking beyond November 13th, we will still sell parking passes throughout the remainder of the school year but you risk a parking fine after the 13th of November if you either park in the lot. Only juniors and seniors may park in the main lot on Rosedale Avenue. Officer Sargenti will sell parking passes to sophomores, but they are restricted to the lot to the bus garage off Washington Street. Students may park in either lot for the first week of school without a parking pass. As always, you may park on Rosedale Hill without a parking permit. Please obey all signs posted in our lots and only park in clearly marked spaces. It takes a special permit to park in the areas marked in red for co-op, so please indicate that when you're filling out your form. Information has been sent to all juniors and sophomores regarding the PSAT test that will be given here on January 26th. To learn more about the test and register, please view the announcement on and Google form in your class of Google Classroom. Registration deadline is December 3rd. Please refer any questions to Mrs. Vasquez at avasquez at ep309.org. Anyone hoping to play varsity baseball this spring should attend a live scrimmage on Tuesdays, October 27th at 3.30 p.m. on the varsity field at Eastside. Please bring a mask to participate. The mask needs to be worn whenever a player will be within six feet of another. Are you good at trivia, math, pressing buzzers, and interested in Scholastic Bowl? For more information, email Mrs. Norman at jnorman at ep309.org. The HOI United Way Youth Committee is looking for high school students to participate on the 2020-2021 committee. The Youth Committee will meet virtually once a month. If you're interested and want more information, you may contact Nate Cummings or Molly Drankpool, and their email addresses are at the bottom of your screen. Present circumstances and distance should not limit your college options. UVisit allows students to search for colleges of their choice and participate in a virtual campus visit with a virtual tour guide. Explore all of your options and become familiar with the college campuses you dream of by being a part of this amazing tool. Try for yourself. You can find the link at the bottom of your screen. Any girl interested in playing basketball needs to email Coach Brown for a preseason schedule at kbrown at ep309.org. 
Girls Soccer Open Gym is happening every Tuesday and Thursday at Eastside. Remember your mask and water. Illinois Central College is offering virtual visits to students while their campus is closed and we are doing remote learning. If you are interested in signing up for a virtual visit, please use the link at the bottom of your screen. Congratulations to the girls cross country team on an excellent performance at their double duel on Saturday, October 3rd against Washington and Dunlap. Every girl ran a season best or personal record. Riley Fortune, Tressa Tucker, Hannah Moeller, Josie Eaton, and Tatum Lamprecht all had their best times of the season, and Kelsey Cook had a personal record of 21-34, while Kerrigan Vandal ran a PR of 19-11 and placed third overall. The boys' cross-country team also had an excellent showing on Saturday, October 3rd at Dunlap. The Raiders were led by junior Bailey Webster, nearly ran all lifetime best. Great job to both boys' and girls' teams. The first soft girls tennis team finished fifth overall at the Middle Illini Conference Tournament in Dunlap on Monday, October 5th. Kale Pitcher placed fifth at one singles. Haley Roten placed seventh at number two singles. Tasia McPhee and Michelle Eunice placed sixth at number one doubles. And Lizzie Roiger and Maris Barclay placed fifth at number two doubles. Congratulations, Raiders. The girls cross country team had a very strong performance at the Middle Illini meet Friday, October 16th. Freshman Caracol Vandal placed third individually with a drop of over 30 seconds from her previous PR. She ran 1839 with the help the place team six. Kelsey Cook and Tatum ran Lamprecht also ran PRs in the meet. Tressa Tucker and Josie Eaton ran the season best as well. And congratulations to golfer Dakota Watson for making it to sectionals. Great job, Dakota. The boys cross country team had a great meet at the Middle Line Varsity Conference on Friday, October 16th. Of the 10 runners who competed for the Raiders, eight ran their lifetime best for three miles. Sophomore Zach All and junior Bailey Webster ran faster than 17 minutes for three miles for their first time in their careers. Senior Keaton Vandal, who has missed most of the season due to an injury, bounced back and ran well on senior night, ending his career with a solid performance and crowd-pleasing effort. That's all for this week's Raider Report. Stay tuned for G-Man's Weather Report. to this week's spooktacular weather report. I am G-Man, and let's talk about the weather for next week. There, this Monday will be a high of 44 to low of 30 degrees with rainy weather. Tuesday will be a high of 40 to low of 28 degrees, rainy weather. This Wednesday will be a high of 48 to low of 33 degrees, sunny. This Thursday will be a high of 51 to a low of 36 degrees, partly cloudy weather. Friday will be a high of 49 to a low of 33 degrees, mostly sunny weather. And Saturday, this Halloween trick or treat night, a high of 49 to a low of 32 degrees with sunny weather. And this Sunday will be a high of 49 to a low of 33 degrees with mostly sunny. Stay safe, wear a mask, and enjoy a wonderful sunny Halloween! And freshmen, you are back in the building on Monday, November the 2nd. Tuesday there will be no school, so get out and vote! And everyone else returns on Wednesday, November 4th. Coming up, you'll get an inside look at most members of the girls' golf team and hear about the upcoming Spooktacular. Plus, Miss Nelson shares some news from the library. You'll see how to return to school safely and hear a spooky story from some of our key club kids. Hi, I'm Sudi Crafts and I'm a member of East Warriors Varsity Girls Golf Team. And today I asked my teammates some questions about their season and here's how they answered. My name is Gracie Luna and I'm part of Varsity Girls Golf Team. How's your season going? It's going pretty good. I shot my best on nine holes last week. What do you like most about golf? I like seeing my teammates and interacting with them every single day. And what are you looking forward to next year? I'm looking forward to getting better and better and improving my score. Hi, I'm Olivia Strawn and I'm on the Girls Varsity Golf Team. How's your season going? It's going pretty good. I just got my best 18 holes the other day, and today's are regionals. What do you like most about golf? Uh, the most I like about golf is that I get to meet new people every single time that I golf with them from all different schools. What are you looking forward to next year? Next year, I'm looking forward to improving my score and being better.
Hey guys, G-Man's back. I'm here with my good buddy JC, and she's gonna tell you guys about the annual spooktacular. So what is the annual spooktacular? So the spooktacular is a thing we do every year. Um, we have a haunted house around the A building for the older kids, and then we have around the first floor trick-or-treating for the younger ones. And how is it all different this year? So this year, instead of being physically in the building, we'll do a trunk or tree out in the student lot. So um, admission is $3. You wear your costume, bring the kiddos, and then bring a mask, um, and you can come around and get candy from them. And we're also doing sticks and yards, so it's like a socially distant way to trick or treat. Um, we can, you pay for us to stick your yard with candy, so we'll have um, wooden sticks with candy glued to the top of it, and then kids can just walk by yards and pick those up. And where and when will all the Halloween spooktacular be held? Um, so Friday, the October 30th, that'll be the Trunk or Treat from 4 to 6.30 out in the student lot at EP. Um, and then if you decide to not have us stick your yard, like not have student council do it physically, then you can pick up your sticks there. Or for an extra $5, we will deliver them on the day of Halloween and stick your yard for you. Thanks, JC, for all the Halloween spooktacular annual. I hope you enjoy this year's Halloween. Oh, yes! This week's episode is brought to you by the Revive Hub. Visiting the Revive Hub is easy. Start by going to the ep309.org homepage, click on the activities tab, scroll a little ways down until you find the Revive logo, click on it, and that takes you right to the Revive Hub page. When returning to in-person learning at East Peoria High School, students will be required to enter through five, one of five different entry points. The entry process when entering the building will be as follows. We will have markings on the, on the sidewalks so that we can properly practice social distancing. One is your time to come into the building. You're gonna step up. We're gonna ask you if you have any COVID symptoms and we will take your temperature. If everything checks out, we will ask you then to go straight to your locker and straight to your first hour class. Do you have any of the following symptoms? No. Please go straight to your locker and straight to your class. Do you have any of the following symptoms? No. Please go straight to your locker and straight to your class. Do you have any of the following symptoms? No, sir. Please go straight to your locker and straight to your class. Thanks to all the students for your cooperation with this process. If everybody follows this orderly, getting into the building should happen in a timely manner. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Sophie Schneblin. I'm the president of our Key Club and that's what I'm here to talk to you about today. So what is Key Club? Key Club is a service-based organization that aims to better our school and community and we do this through different service projects. So of course this year looks a little different than most years. So what are we working on? Most recently we've launched our initiative called Key Club Kindies. We've partnered with a kindergarten class from Armstrong Elementary School. We write them letters once a month and uh, just recently we all filmed the page of a different Halloween book, us reading a page. I compiled that all together into one video and we sent that on to the kindergarten class like we were reading them that story. And that is something that's been really fun and really safe for us to do virtually. We're also working on a virtual cooking class and a virtual 5K race, as well as a drive-in movie. We are always looking for more service projects ideas. And if you guys want to get involved, you we meet 7.30 on Tuesday mornings on our Google Meet from our Google Classroom. I will put the Google Classroom code on the screen if you would like to join. This is a great opportunity to earn service hours, not only to better your community, but also to get volunteer hours for something like NHS. This outlet has been something that I have grown so passionately about over the last four years, and I hope to see all of you there Tuesday morning at 730. 
Hello guys, I am Sophie and I am part of the East Peoria Key Club and today we are going to be reading you one of my favorite books ever, Miss Fiona's Stupendous Pumpkin Pie. Down past the spooky graveyard and across the stubbled fields, there lies a big old haunted house where all the paint has peeled. The shutters on the windows hang crooked, if at all. The roof is in such bad repair, it looks like it might fall. There's a stone wall in the side yard and a crooked picket fence. An old barn sits behind the house that isn't worth two cents. In the garden, there's a scarecrow with his stuffing falling out. And everywhere you look, you see stray cats lying about. This house appears deserted, but it's still occupied. Although some believe its occupants can disappear and fly. The old woman, Miss Fiona, lives here with all her cats. A horse and cow live in the barn, along with several bats. Now legend says Fiona is for a hundred years and three, though she never looked much older than two hundred years to me. She walks a bit stooped over. She wears a long black dress, and underneath her pointed hat, her hair is a stringy mess. One eye's a larger than the other, there's a big wart on her nose, and on her feet are bright red shoes with doodads on the toes. Some folks think she's kooky, dressed like a witch on Halloween, but that just proves appearances aren't always what they seem. For she keeps a tidy garden with a good-sized pumpkin patch, and every Halloween she serves fresh pumpkin pie from scratch. Sometimes in that October, Miss Fiona starts her yield and brings in all of her pumpkins from her big old pumpkin field. Pumpkins line her window sills, and pumpkins line her floor. She has so many pumpkins, some come rolling out the door. She keeps pumpkins in her attic, and some in her woodshed. There are even some who'll tell you she keeps pumpkins in her bed. Then, on the day of Halloween, and not one day before, Fiona gathers all her pumpkins and begins her yearly chore. She hangs a cauldron on the fire to bubble and to boil. She chops and peels and rolls and stirs in a frenzied baking toil. Now and then she'll cackle as she checks her recipe. Then she'll peek over her shoulder to make sure no one sees. For her ingredients are secret, but as she sets each pie to cool, the spicy scent that fills the air makes everybody drool. No matter how you beg and plead, Fiona holds her ground. Not one piece of pie is served till midnight rolls around. As angels, spooks, and goblins start to gather in the street, the night is filled with laughter and the cries of trick-or-treat. Black cats and ballerinas run to each house and in between, wishing every witch and ghost a happy Halloween. But the last house that we visit as the midnight hour draws nigh is down past the spooky graveyard for a slice of pumpkin pie. Boys and girls from miles around come knocking at the door dressed in such frightful costumes as vampires or dinosaurs. Miss Fiona shrieks and giggles as she welcomes each new guest, then sends them to the backyard to wait with all the rest. As the witching hour creeps closer, Fiona steps out on her porch with a crow upon her shoulder, in her hand, a burning torch. She surveys all of her visitors and we wave and smile to greet her. Then she slowly lets her spooky gaze fall upon one special trick-or-treater. She points and crooks her finger and wiggles her eyebrows, then cackles. Come, my dearie, I need help inside my house. This year, it's a pink rabbit that is Miss Fiona's choice. We all look at her with envy, all the little girls and boys. For it's quite the supreme honor to help Fiona serve her pies, a most distinguished, rare accomplishment to be so recognized. The seconds tick by slowly. The anticipation grows. The moon peeks out behind the clouds. The wind begins to blow. Then, far off in the distance, the church bells begin to peal, and from inside her kitchen, we hear Miss Fiona squeal. Oh, come all you witches, come clowns and pirates too, come celebrate this Halloween and bring your friends with you. With that, Fiona's helper throws the front door open wide and beckons every girl and boy to come and step inside. The house is warm and cozy, with carved pumpkins everywhere, though you do not have to be careful not to get cobwebs in your hair. Owls hoot in the pantry, cats lie at Fiona's feet. From upstairs we hear wails and moans that make Halloween complete. 
The pies are most delicious, and she also serves warm cider. Then she passes out souvenir rings in the shape of creepy spiders. And after every one of us has had cider and has been fed, she tells us spooky stories that make our eyes pop out from our heads. And as we leave, she sends us home with an extra slice of pie for mom and dad and grandma who wait up till we arrive. Most folks are very curious about Fiona and her ways, but mostly it's her pumpkin pies we talk about for days. I must admit, Fiona's kooky with her warts and pale green skin, but who cares how kooky someone looks when there's goodness deep within. Still, I scratch my head in wonder when folks ask the secret to her pie, cause she'll wink and snort and cackle to everyone's surprise. Just take one big, plump, ripe pumpkin, add a lizard and a toad, Stir in a few good bat wings. And serve it all in mode. The end. That's not all, but that's all we have time for today. For the full set of announcements, go to the school's website at ep309.org. Also, be sure to follow us on Instagram at inside underscore the tribe. That's all for this week. Thanks for tuning in to this edition of Inside the Tribe. I'm Reagan Perry. And I'm JC Dirtle. And from everyone here at Inside the Tribe, have, have a great Raider Day. day.